Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Tashkent, and this is day three of our ultimate food tour across Uzbekistan. Today we are driving from Tashkent to Samarkand, and Samarkand is one of the most historical, oldest inhabited cities in Central Asia. It was an important stop along the Silk Road, and so we're gonna drive there today, we're gonna stop to eat some amazing food along the way, and we're on our way now, we're leaving. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, Micah. Let's go, Micah. Come on. Chinua. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? How are you, bro? Nice. Good, how are you? Good morning. Hello. How Hello. Are you? Hello. We've got about an hour drive to the first stop, the first food stop. We're gonna eat some fish. Okay, that was about an hour drive we've arrived to. We're still along the side of the highway, but there are some, I guess these are fish restaurants, uh, and just yeah, really cool looking spots. They're pretty good sized fish, river fish. I think they're carp, a type of carp. I can't wait to eat fish. Uzbek fish for the first time. So it was like... <laughs> She took the fish, she just machete chopped it into chunks, and now I think they're gonna fry it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They really bumped up the fire, stoked it with wood, and then uh, heated up the oil, and then she tossed in the fish into that oil. It's sizzling away. Oh, that smells great. Chinos Rybajarka. Rybajarka, that's Ryba. this restaurant? Yeah. Chinos this Rybajarka. Chinos Rybajarka. Okay. This place is called Chinos Rybajarka. 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 Yes. Oh, that was incredible. Okay, the fish right out of the oil, sizzling still like on fire. She put it onto a plate, just drained that oil, and then they had. she has this garlic lemon mixture that she just sprinkled, she like anointed on top of the fish. And you could just hear the fish hissing, you could smell the garlic. Um, then she drained off the water, so then it just coated on the garlic. And then she uh, sprinkled on, I think it's dill and cilantro. The fish is just blooming, it, it's really blooming. You can really smell the aroma of the dill because the dill has, well like garlic also, but the dill has just seared kind of because of the, the hot fish, you put it right onto the hot fish, um, and it's just a mountain of fish. There's salad, there's tomato sauce. Uh, we are all sitting down. We have a we have a small group here, all of us that are going to Anna. <laughs> oh, it is juicy. Look at that. Oh wow. So far since being in Uzbekistan, we've eaten a lot of lamb and a lot of meat, but this is the no, first time to eat fish. <laughs> oh wow. Oh that's incredible. It's so it's juicy. It's like it's very soft, but then you've got that crunchy skin. You've got the essence of the garlic which she just sprinkled all over it. And what you can also do is dip it into the tomato sauce. This is like a light, just almost like a tomato soup. I'll just dip the whole thing in there. And I think it is tastier to just grab it with your fingers and just bite it. Bite into it. Mm. 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 The tomato sauce is just like a... It's very light. It tastes like a tomato puree, but that's been kind of watered down. It's just refreshing slightly tart. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour on some of this tomato sauce a little bit. 
That move where she sprinkled on the garlic water, that is a that is a move. You just taste the essence of the garlic, but it's not that, it's not like a pungent garlic, but it's just like mellowy there. And you can also pick up the tomato sauce and just drink it. Oh yeah, I got a whole like strand of dill in that. It has that kind of like clamato or uh, V8 taste to it, like a vegetable juice. One more piece of fish here, and you can just see how the dill and gar garlic is just caked on. You do have to be kind of careful of the bones though. Their recipe with the garlic is superb. Very good, very good. It was amazing, it was amazing. Thank you, Rahmat, Rahmat. And the aunties, they're so friendly. They, they really took care of us, they're so friendly. People from all over Uzbekistan, they stop here for the fish, right? And it is well worth it. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Let's go, Mark. Next station. Next station, King Size Samosa. Yeah. Okay, so you ready? Yeah, yeah. Another stop along the side of the highway, and as I was noticing as we were driving along, you can see just cartfuls of melons, and Uzbekistan is known for their melons. They produce a lot of melons, a variety of different melons. I just stepped out of the van, and as soon as you got out of the van, I could just this aroma of like sweet honeydew, melony goodness, just it's overwhelmed my nose right now. We're about to eat some melon. Rashmat. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mm. It's really good. Yeah. This one is like... Is like honey? Yeah, it's like honeydew. It's, it's really crisp, but then unbelievably juicy. It's just like honey dripping down my cheeks. Mm. It's so good. It's really, really good. Just check out this car, just loaded to the max. Melons in the trunk. And if you stick your head in the car, just the melon, it's pure melon in the car. That's beautiful. It's so loaded with melons. I love these old cars. Oh, and they said they're loading some melons over here that we should check out. Or unloading. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> oh, this one? <laughs> it looks similar, but I think it's different. Mmm. Mm. Oh, unbelievable again. This one is more, it's not as crisp as the other one, but just as juicy. This one is better? Um, they're both incredibly good. Uh, Which uh, one do you want to buy? <laughs> Which one do you want? This one? What's the yellow one? Yeah. What is that? Dried melon? Yes. Wow. Okay. So Thank you. <laughs> Dried melon. Mm. Oh, that tastes like caramelized melon. Oh, wow. Like melon jerky. Sun dried, like caramelization to it. Thailand. Thailand. This yellow one is crazy. It's unbelievable. It's more like. More like cantaloupe in taste, um, with kind of like, I mean that that refreshing juiciness, but so silky, so juice is just dripping from my mouth. This gentleman is asking, is it the best melon you've tried in your life? It is the best, yes, the best melon I've had in my life. Mm. Mm. Another melon shipment right from the field. And if you can see back here, those are melon fields right back there. So we're right at the source. And from what Bekshuz was telling me, these are the sweetest melons in the world. Uzbekistan right here. And there's no reason to doubt him whatsoever. They are 
they will blow your taste buds with sweetness. Oh, Micah loves to eat watermelon. Uh. Mm. Mm. Oh, mm. all the juiciness. It's just ridiculously juicy. Mm. Micah. <laughs> yeah. It's the best watermelon I've ever had. Mm. Yeah, mm. amazing. That was by far the most rewarding melon experience I've ever had in my life. Man, those melons are great. If you're ever traveling from Tashkent to Samarkand, stop by and eat some melons. They will, they just fill your mouth with juice and joy, joyfulness. And they also say that the melons are so sweet because of the drastic change of temperature in one day. So uh, in the night it gets really cold, but then in the daytime it's still pretty hot and sunny. And so that drastic change of temperature uh, is what makes the melons so sweet. King-sized samosa. <laughs> King-sized samosa. I've just been dozing off the whole day in between meals, but we've arrived to the next spot. And especially for us, uh, he, the uncle is going to make some fresh ones, so he's kneading the batter again. He's using like all his muscle power to knead that dough, um, and then they're going to fill it up for us and make some fresh ones. <laughs> When he said king-sized somsa, he was not joking around. So a whole handful of the meat and onions. He said it's an entire half a kilo into the dumpling, wraps it up, gives it a little pat down, smashes it down. That is a half a kilo somsa dumpling. And, it, uh, and then it goes into the oven, it bakes, and that's what we're about to eat. a kilo of meat on the inside and I think there is definitely a technique to eating this so you kind of break it open from the bottom side oh yeah all the meat and juices are just sprouting okay and you add in some oil it's a special type do you know what type of oil it is is that the flaxseed oil? You need that fragrant oil. It's just blooming with onions and it's so juicy too. One, all right, two, one, three. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's so juicy. It's so oniony. So, thank you. <laughs> you can just taste how the onions just dissolve in your mouth. And then you've got the meat, the fat, mm. the bready wrapper, the cumin in there. Wow, it's just oozing oozing with oily juices. And then you can pour in some of the tomato soup again, tomato mm -hmm. sauce. Oh yeah. I love the whole cumin seeds in there too because every now and then you crunch on a cumin seed and it just like, that spice just hits you. So good. So many onions in there. That's what really makes it for me is the onions. This has to be like the juiciest bun I've ever had in my life and all that oil and all the accumulation of the lamb fat and the onion juice and that oil that we added into it. It's just like a sloppy, dough saturated, just juiciness of meat and onions. You have to kind of inhale as you eat this. No, oh, hi Micah. You want another bite? Come on Mike, have another bite. Yeah. The next stop? The next stop. Oh, cool. Sweet snacks bazaar. Okay, cool. Tea and apples? Yeah, sure. 
Oh, cool. Do you remember? Yes. We are gonna make it to Samarkand today, but we had many stops. So we're just stopping that she sells apples, kurt, which is the dried yogurt, and fresh honey. The, the kurt balls, the dried yogurt, and this one is with chili in it. Okay, man. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good. Salty. You can taste the chili undertone. And like, it's kind of like animal-y. Apple was good and that salty cheese actually went really, really well together with the apple. We are on our way now to Samarkand. We're almost there. Welcome to Samarkand, we finally made it. It took, we started at nine this morning. We got here, it's about 5 p.m. now, but we definitely did not drive, well, we did not drive direct. We just stopped at many places along the way and it was well worth it. Uh, we're gonna quickly just check into our hotel then I know we have dinner planned, uh, but we're not gonna do any sightseeing today. Tomorrow is gonna be the full day of Samarkand. Let's just take a seat in this big purple King size shirt. Oh, quite the plush hotel. Whoa, Micah! <laughs> Look at that lazy boy. <laughs> Micah, let's do a quick bed test. Oh, nice. Micah, go! Come on, Micah. Micah, go! Go! Why are you missing me there? The giant seat is actually quite comfortable and it sort of, sort of like wobbles. Mmm. Oh, that peach is really good. In about an hour from now, we're going to dinner. But for the time being, I'm sitting back in the Lazy Boy. We're gonna have kebabs here, and this is a huge restaurant. Walk into the entranceway, and it feels like you're walking into a palace. Hey, okay, wow, this restaurant is like buzzing tonight. I guess it is a Saturday night, but inside the dance floor, there's a dance floor, there's loud pumping music, the the flashing lights, but we got a table on the outside, on the, in the courtyard area, it's a little quieter. So the standard of this bread is one kg and 30 grams. One kilo? Yeah, one and 300. It looks kind of like a giant bagel and it is dense and heavy. Is all the green stuff? Yeah. Ah. Always delicious. It's a must -tama. Oh, thank you. Rice soup. It's rice soup. Yes. Next course is the soup and there's some cream in there, you stir that cream in. There's rice in here, there's chickpeas, there's bits of meat and a little bit of vegetable, I think. Mm. Mm. I think I can taste the dill in there and the cilantro. And then it has that richness from the cream. It's not even a plate, it's a platter, it's a, it's like a chopping board of meat. There's kebabs, there's um, chicken, there's I think lamb chops, there's vegetables mixed within. Uh, let's make it more beautiful so I'll put it here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna try some of that kebab first. Oh man, that's just like a plump, a plump, oh you can see the juices coming up. That is such a plump kebab. Oh, it's so like spongy and just when you bite down you feel the onions and then you feel the, the juicy fat just like squeezing out of it. Oh, oh eggplant is great. It's so creamy and it feels like it's dusted in chili powder. Okay, try this chicken. Mm, mm. Oh, juicy chicken. Oh, oh, it just slid out of the fork. And then what do you do with the sauce? You just pour it on? Yep. Everyone? Oh, only kebab here? I'll come back for another bite of the kebab with the sauce on next. Oh, it's like the tomato sauce. And also some of the, the onions. Another piece of the kebab now with the onions and the tomato sauce. Thank you. 
Mm. It's like a light tomato sauce that does complement the meat well. It's a cultural Uzbek restaurant. People are... Hello, how are you? What's your name? My name is Yasu. Yasu, nice to meet you. Are you from Samarkand? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Did you have dinner? What did you eat? Ayam. Ayam. This is Yasu. This is Yasu. It's such an energetic atmosphere. People are dancing, having like just incredible feasts with big huge groups of families and friends. So we're just gonna head back to the hotel from here and then tomorrow coming up on the next video, uh, we're gonna go on a full food and historical tour of Samarkand. It's gonna be a fascinating day, so stay tuned. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now. Also click that little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching. Good night from Samarkand. See you on the next video.